Tech family, g'day. I have been lucky enough to own some of the most premium laptops on the market, including the new Dell XPS 17 9700, the Razer Blade Studio, the Aero 17 HDR, and an upgraded MacBook Pro 16. These are incredibly premium machines targeted at super high-end users for whom price really isn't a factor. Each of these costs in excess of $3,000 US dollars as many of the laptops we'll be looking at today are the upgraded models. These machines are for those working with at least 4K video, doing intense software development, producing high-end renderings, who also like to do some AAA gaming. Well, today is a very special day because I now feel I've used each of these laptops for a very good amount of time and I'm ready to compare them and tell you which one you should buy and which I would buy if I was to choose only one. I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the incredible amount of work that goes into making these. This is going to be one of my videos where I really focus on my experiences using these laptops because that's where I believe I can give you the most value. Look, there are plenty of reviews out there already on these that you can reference for specific results. What I want to do instead is talk holistically about what it's like to own and rely on these machines every day. Plus, most of these laptops have several configuration options anyway, and I might not have the config you're looking at. I will certainly put in some benchmarks and quantitative results, but they will be used to reinforce the points I'm making. I do want to be transparent with everyone. My Aero 17 and Razorblade Studio are the 9th gen 2019 versions. However, all conclusions that I am going to draw in this video are updated and completely applicable to the 10th gen ones. So to help us out, I have included results for the Aero 10th gen from Jared's Tech, the MacBook Pro 16 with the new 5600M graphics from Max Tech, and some updated numbers for the Blade Studio for 2020 with eight cores. Let's talk about CPU performance. The main thing you need to know is this, the Aero 17 performs the best. It has the largest chassis with excellent cooling. That combined with its overclockable eight core HK series processor means you can get results of 4000 or above in Cinebench R20 for multi-core, which is incredible. The XPS 17 and MacBook Pro 16 are both very powerful, but just don't quite hit the lofty height set by the Aero 17. The one outlier is the Blade Studio. Razer power limits their CPUs to 80 watts initially and then 45 watts sustain to keep the CPU cool in that 15 inch chassis. Even with the upgraded 8 core CPU for 2020, the laptop simply cannot take advantage of that processor with this limitation. To put it in comparison, my 9th gen Aero 17 was able to draw 86 watts initially and then sustains at 72. Even my MacBook Pro 16 draws more power at 86 watts initially and then 63 watts sustained. At the end of the day, as I said, if you are looking for raw CPU power, then the Aero 17 is the one to go for. However, the XPS 17 and the MacBook Pro 16 are both very capable and the Razer is a bit of a disappointment. I do get the purpose of limiting the CPU to 45 watts, but I think that option should be given to you, the user, and not forced upon you. All right, let's switch gears to graphics. This is where the Quadro RTX 5000 Max-Q in the Blade Studio shines. However, it really doesn't shine that much brighter than the 2080 Super Max-Q available in the Aero 17 for 2020. Let's take a look at some graphics results in TimeSpy to demonstrate this. The picture is as expected. The Blade and Aero are at the top, the XPS 17 with the 2060 and the MacBook Pro 16 with the new 5600M graphics perform very well, but obviously not at the level of the top performers. Look, the only reason in my mind to go for the Quadro card over the 2080 Super Max Q is if you need that 16 gig of VRAM. If you don't know you need it, then you likely don't. I played games on all these laptops, both AAA such as Borderlands 3 and esports titles like League of Legends. None of the graphics cards in any of these laptops are going to allow you to play AAA games off their native high resolution displays like the 4K and the Aero 17. So for AAA titles, I played at quarter resolution, i.e. 1920 by 1080. Now this is where it gets really interesting. At that resolution, all the graphics cards in these laptops were able to comfortably hit their max 60 FPS cap on their displays, normally at high settings. This means at the end of the day, the experience of gaming on all these laptops using their internal screens was fairly equivalent, as the extra horsepower in the Aero 17 or Blade Studio couldn't really be utilized. The same played out on esports titles like League of Legends. 
all these laptops are going to play the title at well above the display's max 60 FPS on high resolution. Again, not much of a difference between them all. That being said, if you do plug in a fast refresh rate or 2K screen into the Aero 17 or Blade Studio, you will definitely be able to take advantage of those beefier graphics cards. Couple of notes on the XPS 17. I did notice occasional stuttering in games when on optimized mode. If I switched to ultra performance, that didn't happen. On the other machines, I didn't get any stuttering on any of their performance modes. Also, the higher resolution of that laptop due to its 16 by 10 inch display meant I was able to play AAA titles at a slightly increased 1920 by 1200 resolution when bringing the resolution down, which made for a slightly more immersive experience. Before we move on from performance, special call out to the MacBook Pro 16 which doesn't degrade performance when it's on battery. Laptops like the Aero 17 do substantially throttle the CPU when on battery. Wireless performance is a miss for Apple. It is the only laptop without Wi-Fi 6 or where you can't upgrade it to Wi-Fi 6. This is a big one in my mind. People buy these laptops, especially Apples, to keep them for some time. With Wi-Fi 6 likely to become common over the next couple of years, this is a real shame for the MacBook. Take my personal use case. I have a one gigabit internet connection and work with people overseas. If I use my MacBook Pro 16, that speed is cut to about half, 500 to 600 megabits, due to Wi-Fi 5 being a bottleneck. I live in a small apartment and don't want to run ethernet cables everywhere. I know this is a first world problem, but seriously, if the $550 Asus laptop I tested can have Wi-Fi 6 in 2020, we really shouldn't be talking about this when it comes to a $3,000 configuration of Apple's high-end laptop. Moving along, SSD performance is excellent on all these laptops. Just a little note here, if you are looking at last year's Aero 17, my model came with a slower Intel 760p SSD drive. However, Jared did get a much faster Samsung in his newer 2020 model. Anyway, not really an issue as it is easy to upgrade. Talking of replacing parts, the Aero 17, XPS 17 and Razer are all easy to get into and replace the SSD, memory and Wi-Fi. Props to the Aero 17 and XPS 17 for having the option of a second M.2 SSD. That being said, the Aero 17 is very finicky about the RAM it will accept. For example, it wouldn't accept my G-Skill RAM and I had to reorder HyperX. I'll post a link to the kit I ordered below. Apple is of course a complete disgrace here, offering no ability to upgrade, which sucks. Seriously, in my MacBook Pro 16, I got a one terabyte drive. Each of my video projects is around 200 gig. So with the operating system and programs installed, I'm restricted to working on a max of four projects at the same time. I really want to upgrade to a two terabyte drive, but will have to sell the whole unit to do so. Not cool Apple. Obviously, I could get an external SSD, but that's just more dongle life. By the way, stating the obvious here, all these laptops came with RAM in dual channel mode. In real world performance, I found all these laptops performed superbly. Even the Razer Blade Studio with its limited CPU performance was very zippy. Audio latency results are on screen. Props to the MacBook Pro 16 as it uses a real-time operating system, so audio latency isn't an issue for this laptop. Let's talk about heat that you would actually feel on the chassis. When performing intensive tasks, the Aero 17 is the most comfortable device to use. It doesn't get warm at all where your hands are, not one tiny bit. The XPS 17 does pretty well too. It does get a tiny bit warm, but really nothing at all distracting, and I am sensitive to that. The MacBook Pro 16, on the other hand's metal chassis gets very warm when under load. Apple prioritizes running the fans as little as possible, so the chassis does get very warm. However, you can install the Max Fan Control app to raise the fans. I've found running both fans on 3500 RPM is a good balance of noise and comfort for the chassis temperatures. The Razer Blade Studio though is dead last here. I found its small, 15 inch metal chassis gets uncomfortably warm on the palm rest and keyboard deck, especially when the graphics card is being pushed. When it comes to CPU temps, the Apple and XPS run close to the max allowable 100 Celsius. The Razer and Aero fare better, rarely going above 90 Celsius if at all. So if you are worried about CPU temps, you know which ones to get. In general, for everyday use, I found the MacBook Pro 16 to be the quietest laptop of the bunch. As mentioned, Apple prioritizes quiet operation over having the laptop run cool, so the fans frequently run so low you can't hear them. The XPS 17 is a close second. Unless rendering a video, I found it ran reasonably quiet. Even when rendering, they weren't high pitched, so they weren't that disturbing. The Blade Studio was also decent. For light tasks like the Mac, it frequently had the fans off or so low I couldn't hear them, but they did audibly spin up more than the MacBook Pros and had a slight high pitch to them. The worst of the bunch for me was the Aero 17. The fans tend to pulsate, which means they come on for a while, then turn off, even in light loads with the fan curve set to quiet mode. What makes it worse is the fans have a high pitched noise to them, so it's more audible. 
When running intensive tasks, the laptop can get quite loud, but you do have good control over the balance of fan noise to power from Gigabyte's included software. Overall, the Aero 17 is not a loud laptop compared to other big laptops, but the fans are definitely more noticeable than these other machines, particularly for light loads. By the way, the only laptop that I noticed coil one on was the Aero 17, but in my unit, it was very faint and almost non-existent. Let's talk about a very important topic, what these laptops look like. To my eyes, the Razer Blade Studio looks the best and is a real standout from that perspective. It's closely followed by the MacBook Pro 16, then the XPS 17, and finally the Aero 17 HDR, which although small for a 17 inch laptop with its thin bezels, it does have a big chin. However, this topic is of course subjective. I would totally buy someone saying that the XPS 17 looks the best because of its edge to edge display without a chin. From my eyes though, the Razer Blade Studio Mercury White and MacBook Pro 16 in silver look more appealing than the grey of the Dell. Hopefully they release a frost white version like on the 15 and 13 inch XPS. That being said, I do want to warn people, my 13 inch frost white XPS seems to chip and scratch easier than other laptops I've owned, so I wouldn't wait around for a frost white version. Now, when it comes to the keyboard deck, the Dell shows oil smudges from your hands much more so than the Razer and the Apple. The Aero 17 does show smudges a bit, but not as much as the XPS 17. Overall, all these laptops were extremely well manufactured and had no issues with sharp edges and all opened with one hand. In terms of portability, the MacBook Pro 16 completely won out here. Not only is it the lightest of the bunch, it also has the lightest charger and it is the only laptop with a display bigger than 15 inches to fit into a 15 inch laptop sleeve. It is the one laptop out of all of these that I would feel comfortable carrying around each day. Second place I'd give to the Razer Blade Studio, it also fits into a 15 inch laptop sleeve, no surprises here as it is 15 inches. The new model does support USB-C charging, which means for days I'm doing only lighter tasks, I can bring a smaller charger with me or share someone else's at the destination. It's also not a heavy laptop, but still not as comfortable to carry as the MacBook Pro 16, especially for days that I do need to bring its high powered charger with me. Given that the footprint of the XPS 17 is quite a bit smaller than the Aero, I'd give third place to the XPS 17 and last to the Aero 17. That being said folks, these laptops have all made incredible strides in portability, especially since the days of the almost 10 pound Alienware 17 R4 and laptops like it. Taking a look at ports, this is where the Aero 17 really shines. It has everything, three USB A's, two USB type C's, Ethernet, HDMI, fast SD card reader, etc, etc. The Blade Studio is a close second with a similar number, albeit it just lacks the Ethernet jack. The XPS is not so good with only USB-C ports and an SD card reader. The MacBook Pro 16 is dongle life, unfortunately without even an SD card reader. One thing I will say is only the MacBook Pro 16 optimizes the placement of the charger if the power outlet is located on the right side of the laptop. The Aero 17 and XPS 17 both have their charging capable ports on the right side but further down the laptop, which means the cable may get in the way if you are right-handed and using a mouse. The Razer has its primary charging port on the left side only though, so you do have to run the cable around the back, but because its charger has ample length, it really doesn't worry me a whole lot. I must say I do miss the Alienware design where they place many ports including the charger on the back, so your setup becomes very clean. Props to the laptops here that support USB-C charging which adds a lot to how convenient they are to travel with. The displays on all these laptops are excellent, which you can see in my measurements close to 100% for all color coverage in my tests. The main differences are around white point, brightness and display type with one being OLED. The Aero 17 has a very cold white point, so the screen seems a little whiter to my eyes. The XPS 17 has a warmer white point, so it feels a tad orange in comparison. The MacBook Pro 16 also has a cold white point, but you can enable True Tone, which adds warmth. If you are like me and like a very white feeling display, the Aero 17 or MacBook Pro 16 are the ones to go for. The OLED display in the Blade Studio, although great to watch movies on, I found substantially dimmer than the other displays, and often was squinting to see the screen in brighter environments. What made it worse is that the touchscreen was very glossy and reflective. I found the XPS 17 handled reflections better, especially because of its high brightness, but not quite as good as the MacBook Pro 16. The Aero 17 has a matte screen, so you won't have any at all, which is great. One positive note that I found in my use case with the Blade Studio was that it was great to have an OLED screen in addition to my IPS external monitor. Having both these two types of screens enabled me to ensure that content looked great on both, as many people have OLED screens in their smartphones and IPS in their laptops. I did find the 16x10 displays in the MacBook Pro 16 and XPS 17 to be more useful than the 16x9 displays in the Razer and the Aero for the professional tasks I do. If I had to pick my favorite displays, I'd say the Aero 17 looked the best in my eyes and the X 
XPS 17 or MacBook Pro 16 were the most useful. In the Mac's case, because I feel macOS by default makes better use of the screen real estate. By the way, none had any problems that I would experience in cheaper laptops such as dead pixels, distracting backlight bleed, or noticeable PWM flickering used to lower the brightness. For the keyboard, I feel the XPS 17 edges out the Aero 17 for the win here. Both have ample key travel and a good layout, but the Aero 17 doesn't have the secondary keys backlit, which is annoying. That being said, you can customize the individual key colors and use that to indicate which key does what. So in my model, I've used specific colors to indicate which keys control the brightness and the volume. The MacBook Pro 16's keyboard isn't as comfortable to type on due to its lower key travel. That being said, it is usable and I personally quite like the touch bar now that it has a physical escape key. I feel like I'm stepping back in time when I return to pressing buttons to control brightness and volume instead of sliding like you do on the touch bar. The Razer Studio is dead last here. Its keys are very shallow and honestly cause me discomfort to use as my fingers don't get much cushioning before hitting the bottom. I may be sensitive, but I really hate that keyboard. Yes, they did fix the awful right shift key placement in the 2020 model, which used to cause tons of mistakes when I was reaching for the right arrow key and mishit it. But it doesn't resolve how uncomfortable it feels. The only thing that the Razer keyboard has going for it is its innovative way of lighting up the secondary function keys. You hold the function button and the other keys dim while the function row lights up. Sweet. Note, the Aero 17 is the only one to have a number pad. So if that's your thing, there you go. I personally rarely use it though. Onto the trackpad. The good news here is all of these have excellent trackpads. No surprises, Apple is still number one with their unique design, which makes you feel like you are clicking the trackpad even though the trackpad isn't actually moving. This gives their trackpad a really uniform feel to its click. The Razer and XPS are close behind Apple and are both very usable. The Aero 17 does work well, but when clicking it in the bottom corners, the trackpad depresses quite a lot and doesn't feel as comfortable or as accurate if clicking there. Importantly, as many reviewers, including myself, have reported some of these new XPS laptops, both the 15 inch and 17 inch have a loose trackpad. My 17 inch did not, which is great, but my 15 inch did. I'll post my video of it in the description below. If you get one, exchange the laptop immediately for one that doesn't wobble. Audio performance. The MacBook Pro 16 is way out in front. Its speakers are louder than the XPS and it has substantially better sound coverage, especially for bass. It is the only laptop that I feel has speakers that are good enough to negate the need of a Bluetooth speaker or headphones. That being said, the XPS 17 is pretty decent mostly with the lack of bass being why it falls behind Apple. Please note, on the XPS, you will feel the keyboard vibrate a bit when listening to sound at decent volumes as the speakers are placed below the keys. The good news is you don't hear the keys rattle like you do on the Surface Laptop 3, the 15 inch version. The Aero 17 speakers are on the bottom of the laptop. So if you use it on your lap or on a blanket, the sound will be muffled. The speakers also don't get that loud, which compounds the issue. The Razer speakers, even though facing up, do not have much volume to them at all, which I found to be a problem. By the way, apologies here, as I don't have the Razer Studio still, so you'll just have to trust my word on that one. All these webcams on these laptops are bad. But the absolute worst is the Aero 17, whose placement makes it almost unusable. It does have a privacy filter, but who cares? This is just so bad. All laptops have biometric login. I found the XPS to be the best as it supports both Windows Hello facial recognition and fingerprint login. The Aero 17's was the worst as its fingerprint reader rarely worked for me. All these laptops were very stable and I had no blue screens. That being said, let's talk about the XPS 17 for a second. I could feel the right fan vibrating the keys when under load. It felt like it was a little loose. I checked with many other reviewers on Reddit who said they didn't have this issue. If you have it and have the issue, place a comment below. Obviously, some XPS units also have the loose trackpad. And another issue with the XPS 17 is around power drain. There are reports on Reddit and Notebook Check that the laptop only pulls 105 watts rather than the full 130 watts, and therefore drains the battery when under heavy load. In my own tests, after playing one long game of League of Legends with frames uncapped at 4K, I found Windows reported that I now had 20 minutes left to charge the battery to full where it was full before. Not good. I'll post a link to details of this issue in the description below. Moral of the story, be careful when buying an XPS. It looks beautiful, but there are issues with quality control. Make sure you check the laptop thoroughly when you open it and are okay with the issues before keeping it. For price, let me go from highest to lowest with a 32GB of RAM 1TB SSD config. 
The current Razer Blaze Studio is $4,300 US dollars. The MacBook Pro 16 that I would recommend with 8 cores and that 5600M graphics is $3,900. The Aero 17 I recommend with a 10th gen unlocked 8 core processor, the 2080 Super Max Q, 32 gig of RAM and a 512 gig drive is $3,700. If you add in a second 512 gig drive, it takes you to around $3,800. The Dell XPS 9 700 is a lot cheaper. With coupons, I was able to get the 8 core 2060 Max Q, 32 gig of RAM, 1 terabyte version for $2,600. You'll find members of my Discord chat posting these coupons in the deals area. One little note here, if you are a content creator, I'd strongly consider two terabytes of storage. Cameras are now moving to 4K 10 bit or higher, which use up a huge amount of space. In my personal experience, one terabyte is really minimum these days. Yes, you can plug in external drives, but that isn't really the most convenient. Lastly, support. Honestly, both Apple and Gigabyte were a dream to work with. Both of them I was able to call up and get my issues resolved. Even with Gigabyte, which has a much smaller presence in the USA, I was able to get through to a technician who was able to resolve my issues. Razer, I called up and received an automated message saying that they were busy and to call back later, which ended up hanging up on me. Also, they have very limited hours. Dell was even worse. They kept me on hold for hours, transferred me numerous times to only later disconnect my call. You better get used to listening to this hold music if you you buy Dell. All right, let's wrap up as this has been one of my longest videos ever. Seriously, here's the skinny. If you need portability or like to use the laptop on your lap, I would definitely go for the MacBook Pro 16. It really is the only device that I'd be comfortable carrying around on a daily basis, and it has excellent support, especially if you upgrade to Apple Care Plus. By the way, this is the device I personally would get if I could only own one laptop. Next, if you have an external monitor, keyboard, mouse, and speakers, which you'll be plugging into, then the Blade Studio is my pick, as this negates my main issues with that laptop. Plus, you still get really decent portability and upgradability with it. If you are rarely moving, primarily using the laptop's internal screen, and want power, over look and feel, get the Aero 17, it definitely punches the hardest for you. The XPS 17 is an excellent middle ground for those who want a powerful laptop that looks great at a decent price. But, 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 beware, by buying into Dell, you are buying into hours on hold, terrible support, and the risk of poor quality control affecting your machine. Before we go, a couple of honorable mentions. The Razer Blade 17 with the 120Hz 4K screen is a decent option. The 2019 model had a screen that I thought was too dim, which is why I didn't get one. This year the screen is brighter, so I might get one into review. That being said, I have used it myself and found the palm rest to get uncomfortably warm. It still has that low travel keyboard and the black color massively picks up smudges. Plus, its increased weight from the laptops I talked about today to me pushes it over the edge of what I would consider portable. The MSI Creator 17 I have used several times and I just don't find the build quality compares with the laptops I talked about today. Lastly, the Alienware M17, which can be upgraded to an excellent 4K screen. I have used it many times and I personally just don't like the look and feel of their latest offering. Anyway folks, I'm out of time, so that's all for today. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. Until next time, I will catch you later.